You're watching Twin Tiers Sunday with Renata Steele. Hello and welcome to Twin Tiers Sunday. I'm Renata Steele with WENY News and this week I am joined by Major Craig Haggerty who is with the Salvation Army here in Elmira and of course we are in December. People's minds are on Christmas and a lot of people associate Christmas with charitable giving and of course uh, the Salvation Army being a part of that for a whole lot of people and this is really a big time of year for you guys as well. So I want to thank you for coming on the oh, show. Thank you very much for talk. having me. Absolutely. Well, I, I want to get out there first because not everyone is familiar with the Salvation Army and their mission and what they do. So um, if you could just start off just giving us a general overview of the Salvation Army as an organization. Uh, we, we're involved in a little bit of everything. Um, we do have uh, worship on Sunday morning. We also do social services. We have food a food pantry, a daily food pantry, in fact, the biggest one in Chemung County. Uh, we also have a domestic violence shelter called the Safe House and the Our House Residential Program, which is a, a halfway house for people recovering from substance abuse. So we're, we're involved in a lot of different aspects. Mm -hmm. And then Christmas comes and we do a big push at Christmas time. Absolutely. And the Salvation Army, I think, really for me, this time of year becomes synonymous with those red kettles that you see everywhere. We've been doing them since 1893. Wow. Uh, Captain McPhee in San Francisco was looking for a way to pay for some Christmas cheer for, for the less fortunate, and he set up a, 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 essentially a lobster pot on Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco and started the red kettle effort, which is now a worldwide uh, campaign. Oh, wow. And of course, uh, we are in the midst of that campaign here in the Southern Tier. You just had mm -hmm. a kickoff at the Arnott Mall, a, a grand kickoff yes. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we're we have 23 locations. Um, I don't want to mention really a whole lot because I know I'll leave somebody out and, and disappoint somebody, but we're, we're at 23 locations. We're, we try to be there six days a week, uh, 10 hours a day. Wow. We're a little bit less successful sometimes than we'd really, we'd really like to be mm -hmm. uh, because the way you generate income is to be there mm -hmm. and be there as much as you can. But we, we do the best we can with, with the number of people that we have. We've contact, we contact lots of community organizations, lots of churches and individuals who volunteer for us mm -hmm. and try to cover every stand as much of the day as possible. And that's a big thing is these volunteers that, uh, you know, donate their time to stand there and ring the bell and, and collect these donations. And really, um, you wouldn't be able to have such a successful campaign without your volunteer support. Volunteers are crucial um, because, again, we rely on so much on this. And, again, the more, the more people that we have out, covering as many of our stands as possible, the better we do. And the better that we do, the, the more assistance that we can provide to uh, pe people in need in the area. Now, is it safe to say that this is your largest fundraiser for the year? Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, now, what is your goal for 2013? For the Red Kettles, our goal is $120,000. Wow. Um, we're slightly ahead of last year, but last year we didn't make our goal. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're, and this year we have the added disadvantage of, being, of having six fewer shopping days between Thanksgiving right. and Christmas. Right. So we're trying to cram as much in as, mm -hmm. as we possibly can. And now that money that comes in, you said you're shooting for $120,000. That's a lot of money in a really short period of time. But that money, you really need to kind of stretch that out throughout the whole year. And, and we do the best we can. The first call on the money is Christmas, mm -hmm. providing uh, families and individuals who, who need Christmas assistance with um, food for Christmas Day, with toys and, and other personal items uh, f for the children and, and the family. Um, this year we've even, we've even gotten requests for, for Christmas trees mm -hmm. and, and we think we've found a, a source to alleviate some of those requests, but the money first charge on the money is Christmas mm -hmm. and and then whatever uh, we have left over goes for our continuing operations. And now um, a lot of times when people donate to a charity they want to know okay how much of my dollar is staying local? All the money raised by the Salvation Army in Elmira stays in the greater Elmira area. Our, our service area actually stretches across Chemung and Schuyler counties so, but the money that is raised here 
stays here. If you went onto our website and donate via, via our website, mm -hmm. um, the money goes back to the area that your credit card is billed to. Mm -hmm. That would be here. Okay. And now, you know, the, the U.S. economy has been in a state of recovery for several years now. Have you, um, as, a, as a chapter, seen greater need over the past couple of years? Uh, especially over the past year. Um, last year, our food pantry was averaging 500 individuals a month. This year, we're averaging about 750. Wow. Uh, you know, you can see it's a huge increase. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I realize that maybe the national economy may be recovering. Unfortunately, this part of New York State is, is not recovering at the same rate. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, you know, the unemployment for this area is higher than the state average, which right. is higher than the national average. Right, and as we have seen over the past year, we've lost several major employers. The school districts are making cutbacks um, that they have to make. And um, I, I always, I know that a lot of local charities, you, you mentioned you're seeing greater need, um, but I also have to wonder for myself personally, for the people that need help, but maybe are too proud to come forward and ask for it. Uh, we're, we've seen a, a, an enormous increase in people who've never asked for assistance before. Now, I've heard that, you know, I've been doing this for 26 years, and I've heard that a lot over 26 years, but this is the first time when it, for me, when I've seen such a large increase of a in number of people who come to us first because they don't know where else to go that, and they, mm -hmm. because they've never done this before. They've mm -hmm. never gone to a food pantry to get food. They've never uh, showed up to find out where they can get lye heap mm -hmm. or where they, their children can get S-chip. Um, it, it, the, the stories are, are just phenomenal and heartbreaking. And so you've got people there that are equipped to handle those sort of requests and guide them in the right direction depending on yeah. what it is that they need. Our, our staff can generally, if, if we don't provide the assistance, they can generally pro point the way. We also have the food bank sends a representative. Uh, Mary Laurie comes to our place twice a week uh, to assist people in signing up for food stamps. United Healthcare comes, uh, Fidelis comes to help uh, okay. to, to be uh, navigators through the healthcare mm -hmm. questions. Okay. Well, we are I'm going to continue our conversation when we come back, learn, talk a little bit more about the Christmas campaign, how you can help. Um, provide toys to needy children in the area for Christmas. So please stay with us for our next segment of Twin Tier Sunday. Twin Tier Sunday will return in a moment. Sunday. I'm talking to Major Haggerty with the Salvation Army here in Elmira and we talked a bit about the last segment about you're in the midst of your big campaign red kettle campaign for the year you set a goal of $120,000 uh, last year you fell a little bit short but this year you're you know you're really hopeful that people you know dig into their pockets and and give what they can and for some people they walk by and they just drop you know any loose change that's in your pocket um, but I do actually want to mention something because you showed this to me uh, some people really do some special things and put some really interesting things in the kettles oh. from year to year well last year we were very fortunate we, we received three uh, a quarter ounce gold coins um, and we were able to sell them for about a fifteen hundred dollars wow. this year this year it's a little bit more modest. Um, it's an 1873 Indian princess um, head coin. It's a, an American coin. Um, the gold is only worth about $60, but for but a coin collector, it mm -hmm. would the, the value is more like 150 Wow. And so, you know, we have that, and we're hoping somebody will give us an offer of 150 and and we can take the money and, again, use it. Uh, to assist somebody because mm -hmm. the Salvation Army is not really a coin collector. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. And so it must be uh, kind of neat when you know you collect the kettles at the end of each day and you have people that are going through and uh, you know counting the money and they find something something like this. Well when you when you do get gold coins it's kind of now every pot is an adventure. Mm -hmm. you know, you're opening up and sometimes you're expecting and sometimes you're not but it, you know 
it, it really is, uh, you know, heartwarming to think that somebody took something of such value, mm -hmm. took it out. Uh, this piece is obviously from a collection because it's in good condition. Mm -hmm. um, took it out of their collection and dropped it in one of our pots and then they rely on us to take it and use it to uh, assist people. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they don't want any thank you for that sort of thing. Not when they put it in a pot. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And now let's talk about one of your other uh, holiday programs and that's the um, Angel Tree program. Now you mentioned how you do provide toys for kids for Christmas and this is uh, one way to um, connect people who wish to donate through purchasing toys with families in need? Uh, our goal with our Christmas assistance is, is that each child receive at least one new toy that they would that they wish for uh, because every kid deserves something nice for Christmas mm -hmm. and at this point we we have toys for 300 children we are 650 uh, toys short uh, uh, right now as mm -hmm. I speak and so we have angel trees at uh, Walmart, Sam's Club, at the Arnott Mall. Um, they, they, this is the second year they put one in for us, as par and ours is part of a Christmas tree deck uh, display that they're doing with other nonprofits. Mm -hmm. But people can go to our tree, take an angel, shop for a child, and then drop the stuff off in a box. And now, is there an, an age limit or a, how? Yeah, we we take children up to thirteen. Okay. Um, we sometimes if, if we have something special that we can give a teenager we will but mm -hmm. generally we don't get a whole lot for that age range but we really think that kids especially should get something that they want for Christmas. Absolutely and it's got to be hard for parents who are struggling to make ends meet and you've got kids that you know they believe and mm -hmm. parents don't want to have to explain why you know Christmas is and generally, the, the requests that we receive this year, you know, most of the time we, we try to screen very well what mm -hmm. people are asking for so that they're not asking for game stations or stuff like mm -hmm. that. But this year, I mean, the children were asking for very modest things like, you know, one, one kid wanted a, a coloring book and crayons. Um, usually it's something more like a doll or, or a game or something mm -hmm. like that. But um, I, th I think even the kids are realize that things are a little tight right now mm -hmm. and so they're asking for uh, you know, really t relatively modest things. Mm -hmm. And so you can go to one of these locations and you can take a look at the angels and what the requests are on there. Yeah, you can pick one. If you don't like one, you can find another one. Uh, at Walmart, they've put, we're, they're doing a, a fill a truck promotion for us on December 15th, but they have the trucks out already. You can take the angels and then just drop it in the truck at the front of the store. And, and be part of that um, celebration. Mm -hmm. And I actually know a few people that um, they make it a family affair. They mm -hmm. take their kids and they look at the angels on the tree and they pick one, maybe those kids are the same age as their kids, mm -hmm. and use that as really as a, a lesson in charitable giving and, and sharing and, and that sort of thing. So it's a really good lesson to be had as well. We even have families that contact us year after year and they become, they adopt a family. We'll, we'll give them a whole family's wish list and they'll meet all the children's requests and provide food and, and oh, things wow. like that. Um, and we really appreciate their efforts because they, it's really coming from the heart. And mm -hmm. it's, you, these are people who are digging down deep to, to assist somebody. And of course you're putting smiles on kids' faces and families' faces for Christmas. Um, but it, the, you're still accepting applications and we've got, Christmas is really coming up um, and so we want to let people know if, if, you're, if you're in need, maybe you need a little help um, and you think that this could be you know, a good fit for your family, you're encouraging them to apply to the Salvation yeah, Army. We're, if, if you haven't applied to any place else yet, you know, give our office a call and, and we'll, again, we'll see what we can do. Mm -hmm. you know, the closer it gets to Christmas, the harder it gets. So, you know, people really should call as soon as they realize that they need assistance. Right. And as you mentioned, we got a couple fewer days leading up, you know, between the traditional Thanksgiving holiday and Christmas this year, just because mm -hmm. of the way the calendar happened to fall this year. Yes. Yeah. And well, that's really impacted our, our fundraising because we know mm -hmm. that we just don't have that time mm -hmm. to do what we need to do. Okay. Well, as we mentioned um, at the top of the show, 
you have programs that you need to, that you provide to the community all year long, whether it's um, programs for children, programs for uh, victims of domestic violence, helping addicts get back on their feet. Uh, I think a lot of people can, you know, learn something by learning more about those programs. So I want to spend some time talking about those in our next segment. And of course, we're going to let you know um, how you can volunteer if you're interested in becoming a volunteer and where you can find the Salvation Army if you need some help or if you just have some questions. That's all coming up in our last segment of Twin Tears Sunday. Twin Tears Sunday will return in a moment. Welcome back. We are learning about the Salvation Army and a lot of our conversation has been focused on the Christmas holiday because I think for a lot of people they associate the Salvation Army with Christmas because of course the red kettles are very visible. We talked about the angel trees and how people can uh, take an angel and buy gifts for local kids for Christmas. But you are operational all year long and you've got a lot of different programs that serve the community. We work 24-7. We have the uh, safe house, the domestic violence shelter uh, for women and families who you know, can't stay where they are. Uh, they can, we have a, a helpline. They can call that, the helpline and find out their options. And if they need to, we, we house them uh, for about 30 days. Mm -hmm. And we also have the uh, Our House uh, residential program which is a halfway house for people recovering from substance abuse and it's a six-month program and we have a lot of people from not just Shimon County but for from all the surrounding counties and even in, into Pennsylvania mm -hmm. uh, who are come there for six months to really learn how to be sober right. and, and live a sober life and and our, our prayer for every one of them when they leave is that they don't return mm -hmm. to using um, whatever substance they, they preferred. And now it can be hard for people that have maybe spent their life as a user and they don't know how to operate under, say, the structure and routine of having a job and having financial obligations or just as simple as, um, you know, being able to develop their own routine. One, one of the, the greatest challenges is we have to teach them how to get identification. Some of, so many of them have been off the grid, off mm -hmm. uh, all, all official contacts. And so to get the assistance that they need to get to reconnect to society, mm -hmm. you know, now you know, just about, about every place needs identification. Mm -hmm. We have to teach them how to get identification. Mm -hmm. And of course, yeah. um, peop some people, they've never really had a real job, but filling out job applications can be a daunting process and filling and, out a checkbook. Yeah. And, and just getting uh, understanding that they have obligations and commitments to be at certain places at certain times. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't done that before. Mm -hmm. And that's all part of what our house does. And you mentioned the uh, domestic violence shelter, the safe house, and now for um, women and children who have had to leave an abusive uh, situation. I can only imagine how scary a time that has to be for them and to know that there is a place that they can go, they can have someone to talk to and get that support while they get themselves established as to really be beneficial. It's a, it's a wide ranging program. We have uh, counselors who actually go to family court to assist. Um, it, in some cases, you know, we don't bring them in. Uh, sometimes we go to court with them and, and have the abuser removed from their home so that they can stay mm -hmm. uh, if, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of a lot of the women that we assist never leave the situation, but they just need somebody to call and talk to and find out what their options are, and they, you know, they're very welcome to do that, mm -hmm. um, and and hopefully we can improve their lives, and and reduce their, the cost to the community of having mm -hmm. all the stuff that goes on. It, it's very corrosive to the to the this community mm -hmm. to have that thing those things going on in, in the in this, this area. Absolutely. And now you mentioned earlier that the Salvation Army also operates the largest food pantry in Shimon County. For, for people that, that um, you know, who ha have jobs but who don't quite make enough to make ends meet, 
They, they show up at our place for people who have recently been unemployed or, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, the, num the number and, and stories of the people who go there are all different. Uh, one of the blessings that we have here is some of the grocery stores donate some of their day-old uh, bakery goods and oh, things okay. like that. So anybody can walk up um, and, and take that stuff every day of the week if they want because we have to give it away. It's, mm -hmm. it's got a very short shelf life when we get it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're really uh, thankful to, to the grocery stores that, that provide that, those things. Um, but, you know, it's there to help meet a gap in their mm -hmm. in their needs. Mm -hmm. And all of the money that's donated goes to support programs like it, these. Yeah, it all stay as it all stays in Elmira mm -hmm. and um, we we do as much as we can and mm -hmm. stretch every dollar as, as thoroughly as, as we can. And of course we want to let people know where you are. If people are watching us today and they say, you know, I really am worried about how I'm going to feed my family for the next week or Know, they want to find out more about the Angel Tree program. Where are you located in Elmira? Our building is located at 414 Lake Street. Uh, we're, uh, we're just down the street from the, from the police station and, and City Hall. And um, we're open, the office is open five days a week. Uh, and the safe house, again, is open 24 hours. The R house is open 24 hours for phone calls and for referrals. Okay. And now, of course, uh, getting back to the Red Kettle campaign, you are always in need. Of volunteers like you said that those kettles are operational 10 hours a day six days a week and that's a lot of manpower yeah you can't do it with with just a handful of people it's it's got to be a, a big effort and we can really use as many people who can step forward and give us a few hours mm -hmm. as we can as they can because uh, again if you want to, want to collect uh, enough money to meet the needs here, you have to be there as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And we found that the best hours are between 10 and, and 8. That's 10 hours a day, six days a week. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, you, what, 23 kettles? 23 locations. And sometimes it's tough to, to find people for all 23 locations all mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Especially some of the ones that, you know, a lot of people like the outdoors and they like the cold, but not everyone is is no. into that thing. But if you'd like to stand outside in the cold for a couple of hours <laughs> and raise money for a good cause, it certainly won't turn them away if they want to do that. Uh, so that your number at the chapter house is uh, seven, or the Citadel, I guess I should say, uh, seven three two zero three one four. If you're interested in being a volunteer for the Red Kettle campaign, or if you just have questions about the myriad of programs and services that you offer, and again, located at four fourteen Lake Street in Elmira, and I know you've also got a website and a Facebook page too, so people can find you on Facebook. Yeah, my wife. Upstate, updates the uh, Facebook just about hourly, I think. <laughs> uh, but you can find it at Salvation Army Elmira Citadel on Facebook. And as I said, we do have the website at SalvationArmyUSA.org backslash Elmira NY. Okay. Well, Major Haggerty, thank you so much for coming on the show. Merry Christmas to you and uh, good luck on reaching your goal this year. Thank you. And Merry Christmas to you too. Thank you. And thank you for watching us. We hope you have a wonderful day.